Do you kind of see what I feel like I'm walking into here? So, full disclaimer, I watch Jim Sterling. Due to this, I'm familiar with the history of this developer and their track record. I myself have never played one of their games. This one comes out and I figured it's time to give it a go. You know, try one for myself, make my own decision. I tell you this because while I enjoy the content of a party that's been... well... On less than friendly terms with Digital Homicide, I want to assure everyone I go into this game with an open mind. Dungeons of Cragmore is a hodgepodge of first-person shooters, survival crafting, and dungeon crawling. Do you remember the game One More Dungeon I reviewed last year? Same thing but take away the roguelike elements. The first-person aspect of the game's mechanics is self-explanatory for the most part. One thing that either isn't there or I can't seem to find is an ammo bar. There are these light platforms telling me my staff is getting recharged, but... What is it recharging? I have two buttons, left and right click. Left click is a regular projectile I can use indefinitely, and right click is a rain of projectiles. Now, every now and then, I can't seem to use that one, so I'm guessing that's what's recharging. There's also a green bar I see every now and then below the health, but there hasn't been a consistent correlation between having or not having the bar and any of those two attacks. Moving on, we come to the survival crafting and dungeon crawling elements, which I imagine most people will say is beyond reproach because the game is in early access. I'm going to assume the new content to be added is simply more stuff to craft or more dungeons to explore. The direction the game seems to be going in is nothing but dungeon crawling aspects to begin with. Nothing wrong with that, mind you, I just think it's a little boring. Crafting materials are dropped from monsters and you can just about finish the entire catalog the game has within itself right now in about an hour. It's very shallow, but again, early access, so I guess I can't talk too much about it. The game is also PvP because reasons. Now that's all well and good, but if a game is advertised to have a competitive aspect to it, it doesn't help for the game to be lacking in players. Granted, there are several variables that could have gone into me only running into one or two other players on any day. Maybe it was just the time of day. Who knows? I do know friendly fire is a thing in this game, though. It's really easy to be going through a dungeon or overworld and try to double-team a monster with your fiery stabs and end up doing just as much damage to each other in the process. There wasn't a way to turn this off as per my writing this, so if you want to just enjoy yourself by killing some pre-bought asset monsters, any other player can come up behind you and give you a cinder-encrusted enema. Now you may be asking yourself, why are we doing any of this? And that's a good question. The game doesn't make any attempt to clue you in on story through either dialogue or environment. There's a big tower in the middle of the map, and that's pretty much it. Now, the tower is filled with monsters, so I can make the assumption evil is happening. But that's really just assumptions. If you read the store page, though, you get the idea of what's going on. And I'm fine with that. I've let other games get away with what is basically putting their story in the instruction manual, and I won't hold it against this one. It's lazy, though. Incredibly lazy. At the very least, there could be a skippable cutscene when the game starts, and keeping said cutscene brief and comedically toned would work with the more cartoonish assets used in the game. As I've mentioned a couple times in this review, the big cancerous elephant in the room is the pre-bought asset use this developer is infamous for. I have no problem with it, though it is clear when shoving assets is all that's happening. Personally, I wouldn't have noticed with this game had I not checked the forums and seen numerous posts linking the asset packs. So, good job on that. The issue I have with using pre-bought assets is you're doing nothing to put your own signature on the game. There is no story to this game to keep me engaged, the gameplay is the same that can be found in numerous other games on Steam, and the idea of the game isn't appealing to me from the start. There's nothing about this game to make me want to keep playing it, and seeing assets that are lifted from other games I'd run into on Steam don't go to help it stand out. So in the end, I can't recommend the game, but I can't not recommend it either. I didn't enjoy it, I thought it was bland, and I've played what is pretty much the same game elsewhere on Steam for cheaper. At the same time though, it works, I guess. The basic concept of the game isn't my thing, but I know there is a crowd out there for directionless just go shoot shit games. So screw it, I'm just going to get a refund for this game and I'm going to forget all about it as I'm sure many others will. I am left asking one question though. If this drunken stumble towards the exit of the bar is considered a step in the right direction for this developer, how bad were the other games?